Well, good morning, folks. Welcome back. So, I was a little preoccupied yesterday. I meant to do this one on Saturday, but today's Sunday, so appreciate your patience. Lost in transition prevention. It's kind of a little bit of a play on words because I'm going to talk about a couple things here that may or may not be linked to one another, but they're on my mind, so therefore I have to get them off my mind so that way I can go about my business and not feel obsessive about it. <laughs> so you think I'm teaching you. I'm actually using this as a therapy session and venting. So the topic today is where are you going? How are you transitioning from a neophyte that doesn't know very much about trading? Or maybe you know a lot about trading, but just don't know how to trade properly. Where are you transitioning to? What is that end goal? For each of you, it's going to be different. And for many of you, the definition of success is going to be widely different. Some of you may have envisioned just the fact that you don't have to go to work. That's that's it. You've you've hit it. You're done. You've duplicated your salary at your job and then now you've basically got to the point where you don't need a job anymore. Others it's a specific dollar amount. Others it's a list of materialistic things that once you acquire them, then yes, then that means you are successful. You know, in the past, many times asked that question, you know, what frames or what constitutes success for you? And I'm asking to do that now again, because some of you might realize that you may have answered this question in previous Twitter spaces or tw Twitter posts I've made by touching on this very question, you know, what is success to you? And then I don't think it's enough just to say um, just being better than I was yesterday. You know that that's a that's a process of measuring progress. That's not success. Success is something that you can define that has a very specific measurement that is very concise about what it is it's stating in terms of success. That means you are able to do something or no longer forced to do something. You have new freedoms. You have financial independence or wealth. All of you are going to have something that's totally different to somebody else that may reply. Some of you may have, I want to be a billionaire. I'm not saying that you can't, but let's first start talking about replacing your job. <laughs> okay. So many people want to just jump way ahead into the future and not realize there's a whole lot of work involved in between where you are right now and where you want to be. And it's important that you don't get lost in the transition. Meaning that because of the things I'm teaching, the things that I will be teaching and the things that you're actively learning that's already been taught, you, you may have this impulsiveness inside of you that wants to change everything that you're doing, completely abandon it, and do something entirely different. And I have a lot of folks that were optimal trade entry traders. That, that was their model. That was the flagship pattern for my YouTube channel for the longest time. It's just, that was it. Because I felt it was easy enough for people to go in and find setups. Because you can apply it to every time frame, every market, every asset class. And then when I taught the model 2022, which is really an amplification of optimal trade entry. So it's like OTE on steroids. It gives you a much cleaner approach to anticipating it, seeing it where it forms and how to engage it. And then I had the silver bullet come out this year and that one caused a lot of the optimal trade entry folks say 
this is it. This is it. This is the one. I'm going to forget everything I've done so far, and I'm going to just do this. And maybe that has been beneficial for you. And for others, it maybe it hasn't been. And now you're in that transition period be between finding success consistently with the silver bullet, but not wanting to give up too soon on it and going back to your previous model. I don't think that anybody should ever abandon a profitable model. Like, I have lots of them. If the market is talking to you in price action saying, hey, listen, I know we haven't talked to each other in a long time, but uh, I'm over here. You want to have a conversation? I've got some money if you want to take it out of the market. Let's, let's talk about it. That model may be communicating to you, but you may be acting stubbornly saying, no, no, no. Don't bother me right now like an ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend. I got a new relationship I'm trying to pursue right now, and I'm trying to do this silver bullet thing. It's a whole lot more videos with people on YouTube talking about this than in optimal trading trade anymore. It's not in vogue anymore. So I want to I want to be part of the hip crowd. So you're probably struggling with this. I don't want to go backwards. I'm going to keep going forward. And I want a new I want a new model to replace one that has been profitable in the past, but I want a better one. And I want to let the other ones go. I want to shed it off like an old skin. I don't ever get rid of anything that works. Men in general, you know, if you get a tool you love, you know, the hammer might have some dings on it. It might have some wear on the handle, but you prefer grabbing that handle or that old worn out hammer that still will do the job than grabbing something new at the shelf over at Home Depot because Carl brought it to work and showed everybody this is what he's building his new patio on the back of his porch or house. And everybody's like, oh, that's the greatest new tool. And you're laughing and thinking to yourself, my hammer does all that and it fits me. It fits my hand perfectly. It's well worn into my grip. You need to have that mindset. You need to have that mindset when you're doing this progression through what it is. It's your success story and not forcing yourself to abandon things that work. Think about it like the, the medical field. You know, just because a new antibiotic may be discovered in the future, do we abandon penicillin, amoxicillin, erythromycin? No, they, they work. They have their applications. So your, your task as a trader should be to build a toolbox of things that work really well for you, that you've grown an affinity for. And not get lost in the transition of moving from one state of progress to a higher state of progress and then thinking that you have to just completely slough off everything before you. And where you're at right now, everything prior to that is insignificant. I only want new things. The problem with that mindset is it becomes a state of mind that you are a perpetual student and you never master one thing. You. You're not going to master trading. I'm not, I, I see a lot of people refer to me as a master trader. It's kind of cringy as shit because uh, I'm not a master trader. Uh, I wrestle with a lot of things mentally and chemically that doesn't always promote the easiest way to learn from me as a mentor because, you know, I got mental baggage I got to wrestle with. I'm a human being. I'm not AI. And I'm certainly not a master trader. But I have mastered myself in the sense that when I'm in front of charts, that's the thing that helps me focus. That's the thing that allows me to keep my mindset on one thing. And when you master yourself, how do you master yourself? By working on one thing and doing it exceptionally well. Don't try to go into some new PDA array like the Reaper. Oh, yeah, yeah we got to do that. That's awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Man, he keeps coming up with these cool name things, like the model that I'll be releasing my book, Venom. It's deadly. Highly precise. Works every day. 
But you're going to read that chapter and you're going to swear up and down that this was the thing you've been waiting for all this time. And I was an asshole because I waited till it went into the book and not in a YouTube video. But you're not ready to learn that one. There's other things you have to understand and not discard it because everything I've done is a stepping stone that leads you to a greater precision oriented trader. You may not be an optimal trade entry trader anymore, but guess what that has done? When you learned it, it taught you market structure. It taught you how to anticipate price runs from a specific area in a fractal and price action. And it taught you how to look for a specific level of retracement that repeats over and over again. And also to train your eye to observe a phenomenon that repeats in price. Now, over the years, I've seen people come to the YouTube channel when I kept it there like it was before I started uploading mentorship core content videos. It was pretty much stagnant. It sat there. And like a diamond literally laying on the sidewalk that everybody passed by, they just didn't recognize what's there because it doesn't have any flashiness, doesn't have any kind of draw materialistically. You never saw my face. You never talked about, you know, the things that I drive and what I sleep in and how I spend my money on this and that. If I would have done all that, I could have been talking about any old indicator. And you'd love watching it because it'd be, well, I like, I like the way I feel watching this stuff. It makes me feel like I'm part of the Lux society, the luxury. When none of that bullshit has anything to do with trading. What I presented and what I try to present is a way of thinking and formulating a, a procedure that you have to adopt as a trader. Whether you subscribe to the things that I say that the market does or doesn't do is irrelevant. Because if you go through the motions of doing the things I'm suggesting that you do and avoid the things I tell you you should avoid, by default, if you make an honest attempt to do so, you are growing into a proper mindset so that way you can be a good trader. If there's a sound logic behind whatever it is that's being implemented as a trading method, if you've conditioned yourself, if you've wrestled and, and subdued these inner demons that everybody has, greed, fear of failure, fear of missing out, impatience, the fear of feeling like you're insignificant compared to everybody else on social media that wants to flex and do this and do that. Everybody wrestles with that. Why? Because you are human. And none of that's going to go away ever. You will just be able to cope with it better. You'll say, yeah, I'm thinking about that silly shit again. I'm not worried about Tom, Dick, and Harry on Twitter. I don't care if they like where I got in at. I don't care if they liked how I got out. They don't. I don't care who likes how many times I put on a new pyramid entry, how many times I took partials off. Who gives a shit? They're not spending my money. They don't pay my bills for me. And that's the mindset you should have. So when you start going through these processes, that books just simply don't do it for you. Why, right now, while I'm talking to you, I, I worked on the video that will be uploaded later today. Probably around 2 o'clock, I'll do it. But right now, it's rendering. I walked through the trade that I did on Friday. And I, I talk about how it's those things, like that video, that I can't teach in a book. Like, you have to see it. Now I can say to you in, in text, and I'll do it right here in the next two or three minutes. It'll, it'll, you'll see how difficult it is. Just imagine you reading it in text. When you're anticipating the market going lower, and it shows an unwillingness to do so, and you identify signatures in price action that suggest that it is no longer a viable setup, that you have to either move to the sidelines and go flat and have no position open, or reverse and use a higher time frame mindset and model, which would be TGIF. Now, what the fuck does that even mean? What does that even mean, man? What's that mean? Right. You have to see it. I have to walk you through live price action and show you exactly at that very moment, just like I was showing my son on Friday. This is what I'm looking at. This is the very thing I'm looking at. I would need to write 50 books 
with dozens of chapters with static charts to try to communicate something that you'll see in a 45 minute video later today. But it's those videos that these impatient people that say to come here, now I'm willing to do the work. I'm ready. I'm writing down what you say. Listen, there's a difference between taking notes, which is beneficial to you, things that you want to do further study on, things that mean much more to you about a specific topic than you didn't really understand, something that's much more paramount, that's more pressing. When I say, when you look at this down closed candle and you think that that's a bullish order block, what denies it as an order block? What says it's not? And what constitutes it being a high probability order block? I talk about that in the video today. But you have to have supporting studies and you have to have these discussions. You have to have a conversation with somebody that has created it. But I'm the instruction manual. Okay, I'm, I'm it. And if you think, like, if, it's the VCR mentality, okay? If, this is dating my age, obviously, but the older folks in the crowd, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And do it today with anything. You buy something that's technical, it comes with a user's manual. How many fucking times have you opened that up? It's probably still sealed in the plastic. It's like a running joke. They, they wrap it in cellophane because you're never going to open it up. But you're going to bitch about how the thing doesn't do what you paid for it to do. But it's the instruction manual's right there. And when VCRs came out, I watched my stepfather get pissed off, drunk, throw it across the room because he couldn't get it to work. And all he had to do was press the tracking fucking button and everything would have become clear. I'm the user manual. I'm trying to tell you how to use this vision. Oh, he's hiding things. He's overcomplicating it. He talks too much. I'm telling you what to focus on, what not to focus on, and where these things are going to pop up. But you're so impatient. You want to put that VCR tape in there and watch that porno and get your ass off. You want to get to the happy ending. You want to get to the story, get to the nuts and bolts. ICT, get to the fucking point. The point is, is you're going to fucking lose because you're impatient. And the people that are making lots of money, they either had that trait overcome by listening to me and doing the things I told them to, to focus on and remove the opportunity to do the things they shouldn't do. And it took a lot of effort, I'm sure, because it's not easy. Or they just had ingrained in themselves through other things that caused them to be more patient. But in patience, that's one of the biggest hurdles I've had as a mentor. Watching students start with the greatest of intentions in the beginning. And then because of the adversities that come by natural progress, their impatience is superior to the desire for them to reach their success. Apparently, you don't give a shit about being successful because if you've let impatience be such a formidable adversary that prevents you from getting there, well, good grief, man. Your success story wasn't good enough to work hard enough for it. And that's usually the folks that just want to have that first payout. Their visibility is only there or getting that certificate of being funded or their first winning trade or whatever that withdrawal is that they take from the first winning trade in a live account. That's the visibility. That's all the visibility they have. And if that's what you have right now, don't trade with real money. Don't even try to do a funded challenge. You have to know where you're going. This transition from neophyte or break-even trader or failed blowing out or account type trader have a perfect trading week and without losing trades. It means that you have this consistency that, yeah, you can have a losing trade. You can have a losing day. Maybe a losing week out of a month. But you're net positive on the month. That's a really good goal. You know, at one time, that was a goal for me. I could accept losing multiple times through the week. I could accept a losing week or two as long as I didn't lose money on the month. Now, for some of you, you're thinking, 
what the hell? No way. I can't do that. Like, I can't do that, man. Like, I have to make money every single week. It has to be a net positive week every single week or I'm going to lose my shit. Well, I agree. You will lose your shit if that's what your mentality is going to be. Because in the beginning stages, it's impossible for you to obtain that initially. They're all milestones in your growth. But much like it was for me, every time I bought a new book, a new course, a 20-year-old hot shot, thinking I was going to own the world because I had flash in the pan success on luck. Nine months. <laughs> Nine months of a horseshoe up my ass. I had no idea what I was doing. And then Marcus said, it's time. ICT, introduction to humility. <laughs> Yeah. And I had to discover painfully that I didn't know anything about price action and I had a lot to learn. Now, I could have got lost in transition and said, to hell with this. I'm going to stay working for these people that don't give a shit about me. I'm going to just eat the shit they place in front of me and call it a successful American dream. I could have done that if I was a dumbass. I wasn't bred to be a dumbass. I was raised in a low income family with only one college graduate and one high school graduate apart from that person. Everybody else were dropouts. Everybody else were substance abusers, whether alcohol or drugs, maybe sometimes both. The epitome of dysfunction. And I saw that already trying to get high all the time. And I said, this ain't for me. I could have got lost in transition then. I said, yeah, I want to start huffing paint, smoking cigarettes and shooting up heroin. I have family members that actually died from that. My father was a heroin addiction. You know, he, had, he brought it home from Vietnam. I could have got lost in transition about that. My parents didn't like me. Didn't want me. Oh, woe is me. That's the reason why I can't be successful. Fuck that. Fuck that. I looked at this stuff the day I went to Gunpowder State Park. I had two moments there. One, when I said to myself, I don't want to work the rest of my life like this. I don't want to do it. I'm not happy about it. And everybody hates the fucking job. I don't care. Folks, I know. and. Ben, I know you're a surgeon. You've been a student with me since 2016. I know you make six figures, $600,000 a year. And you tell me that you're happy with your job, but I don't believe you. <laughs> I believe when you get to the point when you start making crazy money, you'll be like, yeah, I like doing it, but yeah, I don't need to do it now. You'll be complete with your transition. You're lost in transition. You're holding on to something that in one conversation, you'll say, I'm looking forward to not need to do this. But then when you don't have the success you're looking for, I really love my job. I don't see myself leaving it. Well, that's somebody that's conflicted. You don't have a well-defined measure of success that you're aiming for. You're a pipe dreamer. And that's no disrespect then. But that's just the way it is. You know, people can get caught up in their circumstances. And they think to themselves, well, this is, uh, this is the hand that's been dealt to me, you know, what, the, what am I going to do? You gotta just make the best of it and just accept the fact that this is my fate. Fuck that. Nope. No, 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 no. You thought this was going to be easy. Like it was going to just hand it to you. The teachings are. I'm teaching you right now for free. There are no valid excuses now. We're at that point where the people that really want to do this, they're going to do it. If you're going to half-ass it, you're going to fail. If you're not organized, you're going to fail. If you're not journaling, you're going to fail. If you're not measuring your progress against yourself, not everybody else, not against me, yourself, you're going to fail. Now, you may hear that and say, 
this guy's a dick. Look how he's talking down to us. We're listening to him. We want to be taught by him. And he's telling us we're going to be failures. If you think that, it's because you have your head up your own ass. You're the problem. Your mentality about what it is that's being told to you. I'm telling you how to not think. So therefore you can be more equipped to succeed. But you're ass backwards in a lot of things in life. And they've done down the new society, this generation Z. I feel sorry for you. You don't you didn't get a proper education. You're not prepared for the adversities this world's thrown at you. And you think that you're going to walk out here in the elite playing field, the arena of the titans of the financial world, and you're going to walk in here and fucking pickpocket them and they're not going to bitch slap your ass? Please. There is a realistic approach to doing this. But so many come in here with a comic strip approach. Like it's going to be, like it's owed to you. I don't owe you shit. The market doesn't owe you shit. You have to take it by force. You got to go through a tedious, arduous task of just conditioning yourself mentally that this shit is war. It's war. It's not a video game where you get to respawn. When you lose your ass, yes. Yes, Virginia. You just lost some fucking money. What are you going to do about it? You got to change. You have to condition yourself. Say, okay, I did something wrong. It doesn't mean I'm done. It just means that I have suffered a loss. Do I rush back in there through emotional stimuli? Well, if that's what you think, who are you really being in that trader instance at that time? The analyst? The trader that listens to the sound logic that comes from the analyst? Or the gambler. You're the gambler. And you'll foolishly accept if you got it right through luck and, and just happenstance. You'll think that that's skill. And that's exactly what I did earlier on when I was a 20 year old. And I want you to understand as good as it feels that you kicked its ass and you took the money back, eventually your time's coming. I got rolled dozens of times later on after I did that, going back in and get my money back. That's Bailey saying hi. <laughs> but you got to have somebody that's going to tell you, look, I've been there. I did that silly shit. And sometimes it worked. And I believed it was skill when I did it. I believed it was skill. You could have never convinced me otherwise that it wasn't skill that I was able to come in here and they, they, they did it to me and I did it back to them. Ha ha, fuck off, I got you. But two weeks later, I'm putting a fucking fist through a monitor that I can't afford to easily go out and replace. Mad as fuck. And some of you probably did this too. Do you keep making that same repeating error? That means you're not learning. At some point, you have to abandon poor logic. And you have to replace it with something that's going to be an organized approach to help you transition from neophyte, unlearned, unprofitable, break even. Any one of those circumstances can define one of you or all of you. Because all of us are at that stage at one point in time. I was. There's no shame in admitting that right now. Some of you want to go out there and pretend that you know everything that I know, making YouTube videos and talking shit out your ass. You no, know, no idea what you're talking about. Talking about topics that I just barely scratched the surface of. And you're one of my children and I'm talking to you this way. Yes, because you're doing it wrong on insignificant knowledge and understanding. Those are the people, those are the ones I was referring to yesterday. Taking advice from people that are not already wealthy about how to get wealthy, 
and why? Why are you giving time to people that are not showing themselves worthy of taking advice from? And I'm shitting on nobody specific, okay? But YouTube loves to fuck with me. <laughs> I, I went in there yesterday to, to, to check on my, my stats. And I saw that we were at three quarters of a million. Or approaching it, rather. And they, they suggested this video. And the guy's in the, the thumbnail. He's wearing a robe, a black fuzzy robe. And uh, why I quit trading smart money concepts. And they're a lie. And you, and you listen to this fella. And it's affiliate marketing out his ass. Thought about he made $10,000. Then shows his account with MT4. And he's got less than $5,000. Where the fuck did $10,000 go? You made $10,000 trading gold. And here's the trade I did. And he puts the, the little thing on TradingView where you can do a pretend like if you bought here and you put the stop loss here and this is where your profit objective is it's a colored box type thing if you're listening and learning from people that's doing that and they can't show you themselves getting into a fucking trade placing a stop managing it from beginning to end they are not period yes i fucking said it and if it offends you go fuck yourself because you're the problem with this industry either you're promoting horse shit or you're scooping it up and calling it the fucking dessert and loving it and asking for seconds. And when somebody comes out here and says, here's the real shit. Here. Here's how it works. Proves it does. Creates fucking titans in the industry that are younger than you are. Making more than Ben's fucking salary in a year. In three months. They don't want to listen. Because it's demo. And then you come out and you trade it with a live account. Well, we'll ignore that. But remember that one time when ICT said, right. What's the real problem? Selective hearing. These people are miserable. And you can be just like them if you're not careful. If you get lost in transition. Some of these guys and the guys that's talked about, he traded my shit. He traded it. But couldn't make it work because he's unorganized. He wants to be a YouTuber. He doesn't want to be a fucking trader. I am not. Listen to me. Listen to me, folks. Please listen to me because it's the only time I'm going to say it. And I need to say it right now because it's in my crawl and I got to get it out. If you are just trying to learn the vocabulary from me and talk about something that's already fucking happened. And you're not showing executions and you're not showing that you can actually use the information you're talking about. Please don't fucking even mention my shit, because not only are you going to be called out as a bullshit artist. But nobody's really going to respect what you're doing. Look around. The majority of the people on YouTube that are trading and showing examples, they're using my shit. Hello. And I got every fucking bit of respect for people that do that. Even for people said, you know what? I don't think ICT is all that great as a person, but his shit works. You know what? Props. I'm not looking for a suck off, okay? You don't need to glad hand me. But don't fucking lie and say my shit ain't the fucking real truth because it is. It is the market. But I'm getting sick and tired of these fucking faking frauds putting my fucking name in their YouTube titles just for fucking clicks. And there's nothing of substance there. Nothing. You've learned nothing from that fucking video except for what not to fucking do. So you know who you are listening because you're in here fucking listening to it or you'll watch it. Stop fucking around. <laughs> you have no idea what's coming. You have no idea. YouTube ad revenue shit. Guess what, man? That can go just like that. Then what your Mickey Mouse going to do? Didn't learn how to trade. Affiliate marketing is going to dry up. <laughs> so what are you going to do then? Oops. Should have learned how to fucking trade. Right. These are those discussions where I come across as arrogant. I blocked a guy. I said, man, this is really good information, but I don't like your or appreciate your condescending tone. You just would teach and just 
you know, do it like that. That's good. Fuck you. Don't tell me how to teach. Okay. Cause I am an imbalanced person. And when I see people do that, my, my eye goes right to that shit. I, I'm not somebody that wants worship and I see a lot of that stuff. That's why my comment sections close. I don't, I don't want that paraded around, but for the jokers that talk that shit, my eye goes right to you. And you're the, you're the person that's never going to make it. And it frustrates me because I try my ass off to try to get the people like that to come to their, to their senses and say, you know what? I'm broken. It's not ICT shit that don't work. It's me. My best students, my best were the ones in the beginning were doubters. I don't know if I can do it. And then I don't know if, if it's real. Now, look how quiet it is right now. Look how fucking quiet it is. You can hear a fucking pin drop right now. I see he's trading a real count. <laughs> don't fucking say nothing. He's going to come to my fucking YouTube comment section. Fuck. Don't bring his fucking name up. Shit. He's coming with the fucking receipts. Oh, please. Let, come on, November. Please let this motherfucker roll out in the sunset quietly. Please don't come back and roll on top of me. Please, please, please. Funny, ain't it? Funny how any these motherfuckers that said they're going to join the Robins Cup ain't done dick. Just like I fucking said. Got me all worked up. Got me all hard for it. And guess what? Cold shoulder, baby. ICT gets nothing. <sighs> fucking clowns. Clowns! I can't wait to get off this fucking cesspool Twitter. Bunch of fucking morons on this fucking app. Pretending, talking, sh but talk shit. Your best learning is going to come when you're off of social media. I swear to you, it will happen. When you stop worrying about what everybody else thinks about you and what you're worried about everybody else is doing, what they drive, what they spent, how much they make, that's the biggest fucking lie you're ever going to see. Nobody's coming out there and telling you what they're really making. They're not. They're not going to do that. Because as soon as they do that, guess what they did? They set the mile marker right there. Boom. Well, let's check out on him in three months and see where he's at. Oh, he, shit, his account's going. Well, got rid, of Twitter, got rid of Twitter. I guess he's in drawdown. Or the folks that put their MyFX book up and they're educators. And they want to go on other people's podcasts and talk about people that can fucking prove they can make winners out of other people. And they're in drawdown. And they were supposed to come into the Robin's Cup. And they were going to do this and do that. They were going to expose somebody. Motherfucker, I'm exposing myself. Guess what? I'm long and fucking lean and ain't a bitch out here can do shit about it. Nothing. You can't do shit. I'm standing right here. And we still got fucking time, baby. Crickets. They're real quiet. Real fucking quiet. And I'm not even trying. I don't want to scare them off. I want them to be, I'm going to come out there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get on the leaderboard. I'm going to say, hey, ICT, bitch, come over here and do it. Yep. One fucking week, baby. One week. I'd be there. Top of the board. And you would never fucking touch me. And you fucking pussies wouldn't even step. Man, how does that fucking feel to not even fucking try? Come on. I was the easiest mark to come out there and come out and say, hey, I'm going to prove he's a fraud. Let me get out here in this Robin's Cup. Do it. Not one of you bitches would do it. Well, now you're seeing. <laughs> you're seeing it, aren't you? And you're thinking, man, I'm glad I didn't fucking step in shit and really join that bitch. Because I'd look really stupid right now, wouldn't you? Mm hmm. There's two pathways with me. You find my stuff, you do the work, or attempt to do the work, and you find yourself. And you become a very, very disciplined, precision oriented trader. That part takes time. Or, you're going to come in and say, this is too hard. 
Let's shit on ICT. Let's blame him. Let's talk about his bullshit. Let's focus on that and not the fact that you suck. You couldn't do the work. You tapped out. You're going to see a whole lot of that after November. YouTube channel is going to creep in and pop up all the time. All right, man. ICT is out of here now. Let's talk shit. Let's get ad revenue on talking shit about ICT. And guess what? You're the little bitches that couldn't do it. That's who you are. It's not that stuff doesn't work. And I never promised it was going to be easy. It would be easier with me sharing my experience saying, this is where the market's going to go next. And focus on what it is I taught. With that, that's the easiest I can do. Except for make the trades for you. That's not going to happen. There was some drama this week outside of me. Can you imagine that? I mean, I thought that was the that was the problem, child. Ain't no drama unless you're talking about ICT, right? Prop shops, prop firms, funded account companies. I don't have a horse in this race. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about none of them. Uh, they, they're never going to get me to go into their company. They're never going to get me to do any kind of affiliate. And I don't really personally care if they're successful or if they fail. I, I'm, I'm completely outside of it. So that means I'm objective. I'm curious. I'm curious to know what it's going to be like in 2024, 2025, 2026 for any of these companies that survive. When some of you that are listening to this today, you're going to find yourself and you're going to use the information that I've taught and will be teaching. And you're going to become a fucking wrecking machine. And some of you just want to see how much you can beat the shit out of brokerages and funded account companies. Will they start banning my students because they're beating the fuck out of them? I'm curious to know that. I'm curious to know. It's one of the things I'm sitting back and watching and see what impact. Because I know I have students that come in and they, you know, they champion the banner of ICT and say, hey, you know, I'm an ICT student, you know, I'm a this, I'm a that. And they may not do well because of the mental hurdles that trading with real monetary loss brings with it. That's why it's real important that you don't rush into this because you can get lost in transition. It's a whole lot of learning that goes on between your last demo trade and the discovery that you are consistently profitable with real money. See, you think it's just a couple of trades between that. It's a month at most. Can't be more than that because shit, you know, trading's easy. But if it's so easy, why are we so hard pressed to see the people producing results outside of our community. Now I know some of you out there. Oh, but so and so, I understand. I'm not saying we're not the we're, we're not the only profitable community. More public students have shown they need. I have a privacy agreement with the students. Unless they make themselves publicly known, I can't say, "Hey, this person has made this, and this person's my student." I don't do that. But just about everybody you worship on social media, they've gone through my shit. I'll just say it like that. And that's not me bragging. I'm just saying that this industry is now a test tube. I want to see what happens. I want to see what giants come up in it. Because they've been among us. They're quiet right now. I have a few right now. They're absolutely fucking bonkers. They are literally freaks. So fucking good. So fucking good. And one wants to step out there next year. What happens when several hundred, couple thousand 
said, you know what? I'm going to go into these prop fund accounts and do this and do that. Are they going to accuse them of doing something? Are they going to say, you're making too much money, you're a danger to our business model? It's not fun being tapped on the shoulder and says, you can't, you can't do this. You can't play here. I got a chip on my shoulder because of it. So if I get denied, I'm going to bring an army. And it's out of the bag now. <laughs> you can't stop it. You can't stop what's already been set in motion. There is a wave of giants and titans that are going to be using what you have learned here. And they're going to be major pillars in this industry. And I'm hoping that even with the fucking craziness of my bipolar rants and shit and the frailty as a human that I have to deal with every time I talk to you, that the intended target for me was reached and I make a better version of me in you. That's what I want. I want it with my children and I want it with you my extended family. I want you to do better than me. And many of you have so many more advantages than I do. And I want that. I want to see that happen. And I want to be quietly in the comfort of my own privacy and solitude again, observing you again, not interacting as much, and then watching you all slowly grow to your perfect success story. And some of you climbing to heights that nobody's seen before. I can't wait to watch you do that. And you don't have to be cheerleading my name all the time. Yeah, 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 I just want to give a shout out to Ice Steve. You don't, stop. Enjoy your fucking moment. You worked for it. You earned it. The conversation is not about me anymore. I have done and what I'm about to do is all for you to share with me and not say, hey, look at ICT. Look, hey, don't forget about ICT. I want to be forgotten, <laughs> okay? I want to reduce. I don't want to have all this shit placed on me. I want to sit back and watch the ripples. I threw the stone in a still pond, and I want to see those circles go out and become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And some of you are wanting to deny me that. Guilting me. Don't leave. I want to. Please don't ask me to stay when I want, I want to leave. I want to. No one's forcing me out of here. I want to be done with it. I want to be a spectator and a private speculator. I don't want everybody having a day-by-day -day access to me saying, hey, look, you know, what did you do today? What do you think about this? And this is a breaker. Watch the videos. There's people that are climbing up in our community that are very, very versed in what it is I've taught. And they're open. They'll tell you, here's what I've done. Here's what I do. Don't. This is what I've lost money on. This is what I made money on. These are the things I learned from. These are the painful lessons. And this is the best achievements that I've ever received doing this or that. That's who you want to listen to. You don't listen to fucking people drawing the boxes on a chart. Yeah, I took a trade. And this is what my trade looked like. Motherfucker, show us your fucking trade. Record it from the beginning. You gotta, you're, you're making videos. You're recording your screen after the fucking fact. So why don't you have the fucking recorder running when you're doing the fucking trade? Look at my students. Look at them. They want to do it. They want to shove it up your fucking ass. They want you to come at them and say, I don't believe you took that trade. You can't say that about my students. There's no MT4 fucking horse shit about my fucking students. We're out there stomping mud holes in this shit and walking it fucking dry. And it's pissing people off because they can't keep up. Like I promised. Where's all the fucking success stories with Gan? Where's all the success stories with harmonic fucking animal patterns? Balloon fucking animals. Hot air bullshit.
And you watch these other YouTubers that don't even know anything about us, what we do. And they're on there and they're trying sincerely hard to make the stuff that they're trying to place their faith in on a live stream, trying to trade it and completely oblivious. It's cringy as shit. Listen to somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, right? And you're torn. Either you're an egomaniac and you want to be an asshole and say, dude, like you need to do this, do this, don't do that. Or you sit back quietly and just watch them from afar wreck themselves. I did that for a long time until I stepped out on baby pips. I got tired of seeing people talking out their ass, had no clue what they're doing, and instructing other people about things that they had no idea what it is they're doing. Why price does this and why price does that? Well, you know, nobody can really know what the market is. It's random. You just got to you know, take the statistics and just work with that. Fuck that shit. No way. If I was just trading on statistics and there was no real logic behind what it is I'm trying to do, numbers can be tortured, folks. They'll submit to anything. If you beat them up hard enough, long enough, they will say whatever the fuck you want them to say. But you can't hide inefficiencies in price. They can't hide that. That will always be visible to you. Do you understand that? Do you understand what I just said? As long as you can plot the open, high, low, and close, you will always see inefficiencies. And everybody, every joker that comes into this industry and thinks they're going to own the fucking world in six weeks because they went through an IML fucking boot camp learning watered down ICT concepts from fucking clowns that don't know how to fucking trade. They're going to place their stop above a swing high. They're going to place their stop below a swing low. And they ain't going to know shit about what the narrative is and what side is going to go for next. And that's why they teach from the left side of the chart. But you are learning. You are discovering that it's better to place all the emphasis and time of your learning when working on that skill set on that hard right edge. Where everybody is scared to step into that. It's scary to walk out that, in that void of nothingness. That vast span of emptiness, uncertainty. And you get equipped with what it is I'm teaching you. Time and price. Algorithmic principles. Liquidity and inefficiencies. Understanding that. And where is the most likely draw on liquidity? Folks. That's all this is. But so many of you try to bring in extra stuff. Yeah, I, but I really like volume profile. You know, it really helps me when I use the VWAP. Fuck that shit. It's all bullshit. That is a fucking gimmick. It's no difference between a fucking 200 day moving average, a stochastics, CCI, a MACD, histogram, whatever the fuck you want to apply to a chart. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Do you understand? Animal fucking patterns. Supply and demand zones. I get it. I get it, man. I get it. I believe everything that came out in the book and whatever I could get my hands on when I was 20, I bought it all. Hook, line, and seeker, man. I was believing all that bullshit. <laughs> But it's frustrating. It's so fucking frustrating when you sit down and you explain to people exactly what's going to happen, why it's going to happen, that you fucking authored it. Your fingerprints are all over it, and they can't recognize it this every day, and it won't stop. They fucking resist it. makes no sense. I don't understand. I don't understand the level of denial that some people have. And I want to commend you because you worked through that. Some of you did. Others said, you know what? I can see this. This is easy. I can recognize this is some shit here. I want to, I want to learn this. And excluding that group. 
Some of you came into this thinking, ICT's a scammer, he can't trade, and he won't be able to show you anything before it happens. Won't call it, won't trade it, won't use a lot of account, won't do any. Where's the, what's, we did a bucket list. We did a bucket list. All the fucking boxes are checked off. And they're still going to talk shit, but they're going to wait until I leave in November, though. And you're going to see this big mountain of ICT deniers, like a wave come in. And I'll be quietly laughing my ass off. <laughs> it's really important that you don't do things that distract yourself from what it is you're trying to do, what you're trying to learn. Don't give time to the devil. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does. That's exactly what he does. And he was really good at it from my 20s. I was a mess in my 20s. Psychologically, emotionally, financially, it was a roller coaster. And I wish I had someone like this right here talking to me just like this. I wouldn't have been offended. Oh, you're using language. I wish I wouldn't have had this playing with my kids around. Don't fucking play my fucking live streams. Don't ever fucking play my Twitter spaces ever in the earshot of your children. I'm unfiltered here. I'm not proud of how I deliver all the time. But I'm live. I don't have a way of editing it out. But I would love to have someone like me put my fucking ass in my proper mindset, put their fucking foot in my ass and say, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Stop fucking doing that. Because I kept doing that shit thinking it was going to give me a different result. I wasn't doing it hard enough. I wasn't studying hard enough. I didn't do enough trades with it yet. Bullshit. It's flawed from the beginning. Some of you will work through this and you'll think back and think, wow, this took a whole lot more time than I expected. But I'm fucking glad I did it. I'm so glad that I did it. And as hard as it feels and as long as it feels for you to get there right now, if you're on that side of the curve and you, and you just you haven't found yourself yet, you haven't found your model, you haven't found your consistency yet, you're ripe. For someone to swoop in and scare the shit out of you so you don't do any more work towards it. Either talk you out of trading entirely or entice you to look at some horse shit you got to pay for. What's more insulting? Quitting something you started working for but didn't do everything until you got to it or falling victim to some asshole that's going to come in, distract you, sell you something that you have to pay for now, and then lose money doing that. <laughs> That's insult to injury. I have the receipts, folks. I have the profitable students. It's not just one company that they, you're showing themselves in, multiple. The stuff works. I don't need to do those things. You don't need to see any more of it to know that it's real. What are you going to do with it? What's your definition of success? Where do you see that? Is it a dollar amount? Is it a lifestyle status? How many cars you drive? What you drive? What you park on? Your parking pad? I'm trying to figure out why you would park exotic sports cars like that outside. Not inside of a garage. It don't make any damn sense to me. I mean, a pickup truck, I get that. You know, SUV, I get that. But your pride and joy, your, your crown jewels of your fleet of cars, why would you, if you're making a lot of money, why don't you just buy a house that has garage space to put those really nice cars inside of it? Especially in places that where you can have hail damage come down and wreck your shit in 10 minutes. Gone. It's, it's over. Your shit's totaled out.
But success is going to be widely determined based on your, right now, if you're young, your impulsive desires. I didn't have that when I first started. And when I started making money, then I started thinking, wow, I really want the nice stuff. I want to have yachts. I want to have my own helicopter. At one time, I wanted to go through helicopter flight school, and I wanted my own helicopter. That was a goal for me. And then I was told, don't fly no more. <laughs> so I'm not flying no more. I'm not going up there. Okay, so I know some of you are going to be like, who told you? The one God that you want to listen to. Let's put it that way. So I don't pursue that anymore. But as a 50-year-old, you know, year old man, that I don't look 51. I'm looking at myself in the mirror right now, and this is probably going to sound arrogant, but I don't look like I'm 50. I don't sound like a 51-year-old man. I talk like a 50-year-old man to some of you younger cats, though. You got this buddy-duddy mindset about your ICT. But I'm an old hat. And people like us, you know, at this age, we're cut from a different cloth. We're Generation X. We don't give a fuck. We'll tell you you're full of shit right to your fucking face. And that's just the way it is. You know, we didn't have all the protections and coddling that the generations today have had. And I want to uh, kind of like leave you with these thoughts here. You know, as a 51-year-old man, you know, I've done just about everything I'd ever want to do as a trader, as a businessman, as an influencer. Uh, that's one area where I didn't do very well. I let my imbalances take over a lot of times and showed my ass many times. <laughs> Entertaining for some of you, most of you probably, but... Embarrassing, if I'm going to be honest. But that's me. You know, I, I can't. I can't pull it back in. I can't change what I've done in the past to try to garner a crowd or slap the shit out of somebody that talked and shit and didn't want to do anything afterwards. But I can tell you this. I had my niece here. I guess the last four days. And uh, I'm, I'm wrestling with whether or not I want to try to convince my wife into adopting her. It's my wife's sister's daughter. She's uh, a beautiful little girl. She's bipolar too. And her father, she doesn't know him. And she asked me a question. She goes, Uncle Mike, does money make you happy? And I closed the refrigerator door and turned around to her. I said, I want to make sure I understand what you just asked me. Think about what it is you're asking me and then ask me again. She goes, are you happy because you have all this money and all this stuff? I said, no. That's not why I'm happy. I will be happy, the happiest I've ever been, the 11th of November of this year, because I will be available to my family, unlike I've never been before. Now, don't misunderstand me. Money allows and affords you to do things that most people can't, that don't have it. But I was happy when I was broke. Before I even knew about trading, when I was married to my first wife, and if my wife now listens to this, I'm not upset about saying this because we've openly talked about these things before. When I married that girl, I had every intention of being with her the rest of my life. And she's the first person I laid down with. I lost my virginity to her November 20th at 2 o'clock in the morning. I snuck in her parents' house literally laying in the bed naked and her mother came in, grabbed shoes. I knew she locked eyes dead on with me. And she was like, Oh shit. What do I do with this? I ain't saying nothing. This is pretending he didn't see, I didn't see him. And I did not get scared. 
<laughs> I did not get scared and run off out of there, but I had a chance to. I was a teenage boy. And I knew that I wanted to be with that girl the rest of my life. And had she not left, I'd be with her today. I was happy then. Broke. Going through the motions of going through school. I wanted to be a computer science major and be a systems analyst. Trading was not in the cards. Wasn't even, it wasn't even discussed because my uncle had pressed on me at 14 and 15 and 16. Be a traitor, be a traitor. And I felt like he was pushing me into something like a dad would push their son into their alma mater. Hey, son, I want you to go to my college. Come on, follow my footsteps. That's got to be a lot of pressure. And even though I didn't go through that with my real dad, with sports or anything like that, I kind of did that stuff with my own kids. Be a trader, be a trader, be a trader, be a trader. Be a... Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I just paid for. Look what I'm doing. Where are we at? Look at this vacation. Look what I'm driving. Look where I can take you. Look what I can afford to do. You won't be able to do that with a job. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. And I failed. I failed. And the only other recourse I had was work hardening. That's what got me to it. Working menial fucking jobs. Working with people that don't fucking care about you. They don't care about you they don't give a fuck about your fucking family they just assume throw your ass out on the curb when it makes them more money and i saw that many times in the jobs i had and when i really needed something i needed time to do something with a family member that needed to be done and i said listen i have to have this time off well if you don't come in you're fired fuck you i quit don't put me in a situation where I got to choose my family or anything else. And that's why I'm telling you in November, I'm fucking off of this shit. I am happy to put down my role as inner circle trader. Nobody fucking pushed me out of here. Nobody beat my ass, embarrassed me, shamed me, and I went home with my fucking toys. I'm doing it because I want to do it. I'm happy that I'm doing it. If I never take another trade the rest of my life, highly doubtful, I would be happy. I don't need to do that. As a 51-year-old man, if I lost everything, everything, folks, if I lost every bit of it, World Economic Forum comes in, United Nations steps in. World Health Organization steps in and does everything I've been telling you they're going to do. And my money ain't accessible to me anymore. And yours ain't either. I'm not scared. I'm not worried. Because I've been broke before. This country boy can fucking survive. I'm not, I'm not in need of this luxe lifestyle. I enjoy it. I love having it for my family. But if the Lord says, I'm taking it away now. Yes, Father. It's yours anyway. I'm just the custodial of it right now. Some of you aren't prepared to think like that. That's happiness. Having your family, having your family know that you chose them over everything you've been doing your entire life. Calling it happiness. What I have been doing is pursuing something I'm tired of chasing. I'm, I've, I've mentioned it several times when I talk about it, either in the videos I put on my YouTube channel and you hear me get emotional, and I cry, because I'm human. I feel pain, I feel regret, I feel loss, remorse, wishing I would have did more with my family when I didn't, chasing money. I'm not going to be able to fix the hurt in the Whole. 
by losing my grandfather. And some of you listen to that shit and you say, well, you know, he's on there and talks about his stuff, you know. He's a weak man. You're a bitch. Because I can tell you how I feel. And I can share how I feel. And I feel good about it. Because I'm, it means I'm human. And my feelings and my emotions towards that man as my father role, that figure that stepped in as a father for me when nobody was able to do so. I miss him. And I wish he could see who I am today. What I stand for. What I've done for all of you. How I spend my time investing in all of you. Trying to convince you to care at least as much as I do about your success. Because I know how it is to not have anybody around you that doesn't believe. It's easy to share your interest in this. And then everybody around you tell you, you're wasting your time. I went through that. These same family members don't even talk to me anymore. Because they're wretched fucking trash. Because I live a life they'll never obtain. And they wanted me to fail. And God said otherwise. I could have believed all that shit that was being spoken to me over me. Oh, he's going to fail. He's going to be just like his father. He can't control himself. He's going to kill somebody one day. I almost did ninth grade. Strangled a man. Right in front of the whole, whole class. Strangled him. Right in front of everybody. Got expelled. Wayne Stratemeyer. He's an EMT today. You know what? If I was laying on the street and he came up as the EMT, I'd feel confident that he would still try to save my life. We shook hands the following year when I got back into school. But everybody, everybody walked away from me when I went in there. It was like a movie scene. Because they knew that I was that guy that will strangle your fucking ass right in front of everybody and not give a fuck. That's how unstable my childhood was. I couldn't control my, my rage. I couldn't control my emotions. I couldn't control. You didn't want to know what I was thinking. And I hated my family members that would tell me I'm going to be like my father. That's why I never drank alcohol because inside of me was rage. And if I gave myself the opportunity to not be in control as much as I had at the time of my faculties, I would probably commit murder, beat somebody in the end of their life, and be in prison just like him. And how I didn't go to jail that day with everybody witnessing me do this. And Wayne said, I don't want to press charges to his mother and father. I had a court date. So it's be at Kelso Drive down in Essex, Maryland. I showed up, my mom's sitting next to me thinking, well, you better be ready. And he dropped the charges. Think about that. That's God's grace. I didn't deserve that. I should have been punished for that. And we ended up becoming friends. Not close friends, but friends. Now you might say, well, it's because he's probably scared to death of you. He didn't look scared. He stands about a foot and a half taller than me now. He's fucking huge now. But in ninth grade, the last four minutes of my class, and then the school year was done. I can't even tell you why I fucking lost myself. I just, somebody bumped into my desk and uh, it was a blank. And all of a sudden, there I was, strangling this guy with the Venetian blind cord. Room 101 in Kenwood High School, right across the hall from the main office. Dr. Sabatka, that was the teacher. That's one thing I wish I could go back in time and not do. But because I did that, and because my father was a contract murderer, Michael Joe Howington, 155-634, Jessup, Maryland, Penitentiary. He exists. He's real. He just, he just went out for parole. I'm not sure he's going to get it or not. I hope he does. But not one person, not one person cheerleaded me on when I started. My uncle did until I started, and then when I started making money, he didn't like that. So I, I wish I could come back and say to you, 
I had encouragement because of this person in my family and this person in my friendship circle. I don't have that. I wish I could. And chances are you probably don't have it either. But here's what's going on in your head. In the quiet of your nights going to sleep. Think about how you got to go to work the coming Monday or tomorrow when you wake up. You got to go to work again and be around people that don't like you, respect you, or care for you or your family or what you're desiring to do in your life. But if you made your interest in doing this public to them or anyone, 98% probability they told you something to the effect that would not be constructive criticism or encouragement. They probably take, they probably talk to you in the sense that it's discouragement. And that's how the enemy works. I mean, think about how you found me. I don't advertise. I could. I got a budget that can fucking blow everybody's shit up on YouTube. I don't want to get big. I'm too big for my britches now. I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. Too many people want to fucking come to my house and knock on doors and leave shit at my fucking doorstep. They want to wait for me to drive down the fucking neighborhood area and follow me and go to a red light and say, hey, I see T. What the fuck? This is my personal life. Don't invade my personal space. I'm not a fucking celebrity. And some of you think you want this. And I'm telling you right now, you probably wouldn't feel comfortable like this. There's no privacy. Everybody wants to have a moment with you like you're some fucking Gandhi or something. I'm nobody, man. I'm nobody. I'm just a fucking guy. That's it. That's all I am. And some of you want to pattern everything you do in this world based on me. Don't. Do more. Do better than me. I didn't set out to have clones of me. In fact, if you've been around for a long time, you've heard me bitch about this. Have your own identity. I'm reducing inner circle trader. I'm putting him down. He, it needs to happen. I have new chapters that I have to live out with my family. And I don't want you to think that your friends or your family or your coworkers that had the opportunity to just try to discourage you to not do this. Or to tell you when you tell them, hey, you know, I lost some money. If you said, hey, I made money. And then they asked you the following week, hey, you know, how you doing? And you want to be honest. And, well, you know, I lost money. Oh, shit. That's why I would never do that shit. Man, fuck, no way. No way I would do that. My wife would kill me if I lost 50 bucks. Don't let these people discourage you. Don't invite them to the conversation. Because I'm going to tell you something. At my peak, none of the people that said that I was going to fail in my family or friends were there to apologize. They're not there to say, congratulations, you did good. So fuck them. Fuck them and their misguided fucking bullshit. Fuck them and their loser mentality. Fuck them and their nine to five working class hero horse shit. Nobody gives a fuck. Okay? Because I'm rising. In the morning, and I'm laying down at night with not giving a fuck what they think about me. But I'm always in their mouth at the holidays that I'm not around them. And my holidays are fucking sweet. They're memorable. No drama. No bullshit from broke motherfuckers. Now, in a context... It sounds like, well, you're an arrogant piece of shit. Listen to you. You don't know what I'm talking about. If you just came into the conversation... The context is there are people that are around you right now. They want to see you fail. They can't wait to see you fail. So they can tell you if they got balls to tell you to your face. I told you so. But most likely they're going to go to their friends that are in your circle too and say, <laughs> I told you, I told you it's going to fail. I told you she wasn't going to be able to do it. She'll be here the rest of her life just like us. Don't believe that. Don't fucking believe that for a second. Don't give any room for that shit. When you start feeling that kind of stuff, that's exactly when you go into the fucking charts.
turn some music on that you can study with. Not ha- not hard driving music. Something that's I don't know. I got a couple tracks that I listen to, some playlists on YouTube that I like to play in the background. And they're just like very, very low fi, like nothing really energetic, but it's just real it invites study. Block that shit out. Don't give any room for it. Do not get lost in transition. You have to absolutely know where you're going. Because when people walk in front of you and they try to stop you and say, hey, you're never going to make it. You just sidestep them, walk around them. You don't need to plow over them like I've done in my past. I've done that kind of stuff. I wish I could go back and not do those things. It would have been better if I would have handled myself in a way where whatever the fuck they said, it didn't matter. Because back then it did. It mattered. It hurt. It cut deep. These are supposed to be my fucking friends. These are supposed to be my fucking blood. The people that watch me come up out of diapers and learn how to walk. Me and an aunt and my uncle Stan, who was talking to me when I was 14 years old to teach me how to trade, didn't know what the fuck he was doing, got lucky trading sugar, made some money and bought a condominium down in Ocean City. Big fucking deal. But back then, that was a big deal. But when these people and me, three of us, are the only ones that graduated high school, that's where I came from. That's the fucking pedigree I came from. A contract murderer as a father and a mother that was going to abort me, but my contract father, my contract murdering father said, if you kill that baby, I'm going to cut your throat ear to ear. And she believed him. Why did she believe him? Because he punched through my grandfather's back door, put his thumb, her, his thumb in her mouth, pressing her tongue down, and dragged her through the fucking door, down the back steps, and got her out of there and beat her ass. So when he told her, if you have an abortion, I'm going to cut your ear, I cut your throat ear to ear, she believed him. That's why I'm talking to you today. I wasn't supposed to be here. In my mother's eyes. She had just aborted some sibling of mine. I'll meet in heaven. Literally just a month before. I was conceived. By another man. That's the pedigree I came from. I was not born with a silver spoon up my fucking ass. Nobody gave me. A handshake and said, I'm going to help you out and make it easier for you. I had to work for it. And by God's grace, he opened my eyes and understanding, placed me in the certain circumstances and places where I would be identified and opportunities were laid before me. That sounds like divine intervention to me. Don't give room for the devil. When someone speaks over you saying that you're not going to be able to be successful, you're never going to be able to do this, you're going to fail, you're going to do this, not today. I ain't got time for it. I've got things to study, things I'm planning for. Cast forth a vision. Write it down, make it clear, and stick to it every single day. Don't deviate. Refine it. Don't abandon it. If you don't do these things, folks, you're inviting that spirit of failure to come right into your life. And as hard as things are about to get, maybe they are right now for some of you. I was looking at the bag of Cool Ranch Doritos, uh, my youngest son. He loves these things. I wish he wouldn't eat them, but it's one of his vices, so I let him have them once in a while throughout the week. Uh, I looked at the bag of it last night. It was sitting on the table in the dining room. I was getting ready to go off and say, why'd you leave this on the table? And I saw the price on it, $6.99 for the bag. $6.99. Now, at first, when I looked at it, it didn't make any impression on me. Like, oh, who gives a fuck? You know, it's seven bucks. And I sat down and I was listening to a YouTuber. I like listening to He's a homesteader. And I looked at that price again. I was like, wow. I'm listening to this homesteader guy. He's talking about how things are expensive for him. 
So that put me in a state of mind. I'm thinking about it through his eyes. And then I saw that price for $6.99 for a bag of Doritos. And I'm thinking, wow. I remember when these things were like $1.60. Now they're seven bucks. I mean, I'm old, but I, I mean, it doesn't feel like it's been that much time. So imagine if things get even more expensive and meat and steak and chicken, all that's going to get even more expensive. I told my students two years ago, you know, beef prices are going to keep going up. We're not done. And they keep going up. Steak's going to be more expensive. Oh, you're full of shit, ICT. I'm, I'm done. I'm not coming back to this mentorship. Fast forward to 2022. Email box. ICT, I'm an asshole. Forgive me. Everything you said is happening. <laughs> it's frustrating, man. It's frustrating. And you don't want to invite this spirit of failure in when everything is becoming in increasingly difficult. I have children that did not listen to me when they were younger to learn how to do this. You would think, just like all of you identify who I am, you would think, seeing how we live, what we're doing, how I'm doing it, you would think, I really want to do that. This is better than going out and get a job. No, 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 no. That's, that's, <laughs> that would make too much fucking sense, right? Nope. Youth. Youth is always an issue. You think you know everything, you know shit. You're thinking about the impulsive thing that you want to think about doing right now. No planning for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years in advance. You have the, grap the grasshopper mentality, and not the ant. Grasshopper hopping around, eating whatever the fuck it wants to eat, wherever it lands. You ain't worried about shit. The whole time, ants are storing up, getting ready. And that's how my kids have been. So I make them work jobs. I make them. I could remove all that. But what is it doing for me as a father? What is it doing for them as an adult? <sighs> a guy years ago sent me an email. When I was lost in transition as a dad, I made known publicly what I was going to do with my kids. He sends me an email and says, uh, you know, my dad did this to me. And I was lazy and I didn't appreciate shit. And if you do that for your kids, they're going to do the same thing. I told him to go fuck himself and blocked his email. That was a mistake. Because he was right. My oldest son, Cody, lazy. Impulsive, gambler, didn't listen, wanted to prove dad wrong. Got himself into $40,000 debt, no profits in crypto. <laughs> It, and I warned him and didn't listen. My daughter, <laughs> train wreck, <laughs> train wreck of financial decisions. And it hurts me because I want her to do other things in different directions with her life. And she just doesn't want to listen. She is the epitome of Generation Z. Liberal mindset, fucking everything ass backwards. But what do you do? She's your daughter, right? You got to take care of her. You got to love her. They have no idea how hard it's going to be. They have no idea how hard it would be if God hadn't given me the increase that I have. And some of you that are just waltzing through, wasting your time. You're wasting your time, not pouring yourself into this, educating yourself, making yourself ready for these things to happen because they're coming. They're coming and I might not be hedged with trading. It could be disrupted, folks. How do you not know that some craziness can't happen and things like that? get interrupted for a while and you can't earn income that way. It sounds like it's far-fetched. can't happen. Oh, it would never happen. This 
check and see if I'm still connected here. But, you know, I told everybody on Twitter in 2019 that crazy shit was coming. And I got laughed at, ridiculed, and said it's going to be worse than September 11th in 2001. And the whole world went upside down. And I told you, you won't see the real ramifications until 18 months after. And we're seeing all kinds of shit. And the economy is going to go to shit. And they're trying very, very hard to put things in place where you have to listen or you can't eat. And people like me that have the opinion that I have and the perspective on life, I'm not a complier. <laughs> and this is the way it is. I'm not telling you not to uncomply. I'm not telling you to do this or do that. I'm not fucking listening. So there you go. I don't give a fuck because I am not, I don't want to live in a world like that. But for some of you, you think that this world is just like it was in 2018. Nothing's changed because you listen to a TV on your fucking wall that says everything's normal and Trump's the bad guy and Biden this and Biden that. They're all part of the same shit, man. They're all playing theater and they all have their roles and they want you to pick a side so that way you're divided against one another. Just like in the trading industry, that guy's better than this guy. This, this shit's better than that. If you're not a trade, you make money. That's all that matters. But divisiveness, this tearing at one another, that's going to increase. And if you don't know how to make money, and I'm not claiming that this is the answer to it because I don't know the answer. I just know that what we're going into, nobody's ready for it. I'm not. I'm not. Because I have children that did not listen to have their mindsets prepared for it. I told them growing up that this was coming before 2019. I told them before 2016 when I told my private mentorship. Uh, before I even started mentorship, I was on Twitter telling everybody that Trump was going to get elected and they were going to use him as a fall guy. Look what's happening. And I don't fucking vote. And I didn't vote for Trump and I won't vote for him if he runs again because it's all bullshit. It's a selection, not an election. But you guys believe the bullshit. They're erasing the real history and telling you what it should be in their eyes. And you're all eating it up. Running around wearing masks, driving in the car by your fucking selves. If you're not prepared, when it gets really hard and it's coming. Do you honestly think we're going to have a real election next year in the United States? Seriously, I don't give a fuck about this Twitter space. They can kick me up. Whole, they can take this whole fucking account down based on what I'm saying. I don't give a fuck. If you're listening, Elon or whatever, fuck yourselves. Okay, I don't care. This shit is cul it's, it's culminating into the crescendo. And some of you can't even see it. A lot of you can. That's good. But many of you don't. Like, they're literally using the Constitution as toilet paper. And everybody's just sitting back saying everything's normal. Who's, who's, who's playing today on the weekend games? Y'all coming in for the cookout on Saturday and Sunday? Don't lose sight of that stuff. Don't lose sight of what it is that you're trying to do. You need to be preparing yourself not to get rich. Some of you might get rich. But your focus should be, I need to make sure my ends meet. And if shit gets scary, where you may lose your job, what happens when they say mask up again? And you can't do this and you can't do that. And it affects your job. I have students that couldn't go to work anymore. They lost their job. Some of them refused to take that in the shoulder and they were denied employment. 
So don't give me the shit that, well, that's, you know, that ain't never going to happen. You don't know what's coming. I do. A whole lot of uncomfortable shit. And having lots of money, no job, and being able to trade real, real good doesn't make me exempt. Because a click of a button, my money could be gone. Just like that, just like yours, and everything is changed. And it's going to happen suddenly. Suddenly it's going to happen. Boom. And people are going to be in shock. How are we going to make things? How, how are we going to make things work again? How are we going to get money? How are we going to work? How, you know, how, what are we going to do? Listen, folks, they're talking about fucking aliens, okay? UFOs and aliens and bullshit. They, they're pulling everything out. <laughs> okay, all stops. They're being pulled out. And you think they won't do something crazy like sink the global economies? They already told you it's coming. But you're denying it. You're ignoring it. Look at leadership in every country, not the circus that we have in America right now, everywhere. It's all theater. It's like WWF wrestling. Everybody's a fucking villain, a Bond villain, matter of fact. It's hard to trust anything. Hard to trust anyone. It used to be you could trust the police. You could trust your, your leadership. No. Everything's in question now. Corruption's rampant everywhere. And when it accelerates even more, see some of some of these people I listen to that are not traders, they're like homesteaders. I like listening to their views because they've been raising cattle, they've been growing their own crops for a long time, and I'm trying to educate myself how to do that. The last three years, I've been trying to do this, and to hear how they think, to hear how they talk to their family members and what they try to prepare for. Uh, they don't know anything like we do at the markets. They have no idea. They live simple lives. Not to the to the degree like an Amish person would, uh, but to hear their fear, it, it's sobering because it, it's different when you have a lot of money and you've been successful for a long time and you feel confident. You just walk out there and pull money out of, out of the thin air in the marketplace, and that's just the way it is when you're able to do what we do. So you don't see things through the lens that the average person would. And when I was listening to one of the guys, I like listening to, um, it, it made me reflect on something as simple as a bag of chips that I think nothing of when I get it. It's like you know, when I say when I buy these eight-cylinder vehicles, I don't give a fuck if gas is $25 a gallon. I'm going to still drive it. It's not going to make me get rid of it. And it sounds crazy to some of you, but it's I, I want what I want. But what happens when ICT is denied because the markets are not reachable anymore? What happens when central bank digital currencies step in and they say your money doesn't work anymore and now you have an expiration? You have to spend it by this much date. You know, this date and time, that money expires because that's exactly what a central bank digital currency is going to do. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. They have to tell you before they do it. You can't save to build wealth. So you have to do what you can while you can. And that's not meant to inspire fear and panic. I'm teaching you to think about things soberly so that way, the time that we have, you should be pouring yourself into that. You don't have money right now? Okay, go through those prop fund account companies. I have students that are beating the shit out of it. It's costing them money. They're not... 100% successful in everything they're doing, but they're making money. They're putting it to work. And I would hate for those individuals that are doing well to go out there and try to do stupid shit like, I'm going to buy another car. I'm going to buy another car. I'm going to buy another car. I'm going to buy this thing here. But they don't have a fucking generator for their fucking house. They don't have two years, at least a year's worth of non-perishable food and ways to have fresh water. That's the shit I've been preaching to you. Having a lot of money in the bank, 
means absolutely fuck all if you can't get groceries with it. And that's where we're at. We're at the point where these people know a lot of people have woke up to the bullshit they've been doing and the things that they want to do and what they want to implement and none of it's for our betterment. And they are panicked. They only have a short period of time. And they're going to try to get as much as they can put in place. They have been for the last 40 years been putting shit in place. These judges that come in and be put in by this president and that president. You're seeing why they've been put there now, aren't you? Defense. Blocking. Progress. Don't go backwards. You're part of the team. Got to keep things going. We gained ground. We're not losing any, any, any yardage. The goalpost is in reach now. We're getting there. And things they wanted to do in 2030... They're trying to get done by 2025 now. I need to stop doing this because I love it and it consumes me. And if I don't put it down, I will not have done everything that I could have done to prepare my wife's mindset about what's coming. She's just recently, this, this year, warmed up to a lot of things that I've been telling her for years. We used to have arguments where I had to shut up because I, I knew that she couldn't understand what I was saying. Where I got the information from, how I know it, wasn't enough. And then she started seeing it happening. Just like having the newspaper headlines for the next 18 months in the future. And we're coming into that part where it gets really bad. And honestly, I don't want to have the ability to see what some of you are going to say. Because you're going to say, I wish I would have listened. And that's going to tear me up. I have to do it because I have to make sure my family and my closest friends have my attention. They have access to the resources that I'm making available to them. And I want to be clear headed. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to be doing videos and trying to you know, inspire you to do something that I've already done. At this stage, really, it's just going to be basically me doing what I've already taught you and just proving it makes money. And for you still, some of you, that's not enough. I don't know what else I can do. You either want to do it or you don't. But I promise you this. This time. Next year. You're going to wish you did. It's going to get really, really expensive. Things are going to get really hard to get. And there will be lockdowns coming. And you have to be able to get what you can acquire right now while you can. And that means Second Amendment resources, whether you subscribe to them being warranted or not, I think everybody should have one. More than one. And the freedom seeds that go in them. Not to do some kind of 1776 moment, because that ain't going to work. There's too many things in place that's not going to work. But when people get hungry and they start building up groups of them and they know that you probably have stuff in your house, you got to make it seem very convincing. It's not good for them to try. Home protection, basically. 
so many people out here trying to learn this stuff and they want to do the fast lifestyle right now and completely oblivious to what's going on. There's so much more than just living the luxe lifestyle. Peace of mind knowing that, hey, if I lost this $2 million house, if I lost all my cars and this property and the other properties, I would not give two fucks. Wouldn't care. I have a place that is not among the nicer neighborhoods like this. Take me some time to get there, but guess what? I got a fucking RV that makes it real comfortable getting from where I am to there. It's not in my name. Nobody sees me sleeping there. But I got three and a half years worth of non-perishable food and four different ways for water supply. I have solar there. I have backup generators. I have shit packed up like a motherfucker. And I could be there in 45 minutes. Some of you can't do that. I understand. It took me a while to get to that. But apart from God, inspiring me to push on you to do these types of things, I'm not sure if you'd ever think about it. And some of you probably get nervous. I've had people tell me I had to turn the Twitter space off. It was, I was getting anxious. You know what that means? It means you're not ready. You're not prepared. So that's the proof that you need to start doing things to get yourself prepared. That means when you make money, think about how you can establish a, uh, a hedge against higher prices because food's going to get more expensive and it's going to be harder to get. And have you noticed that they want to really do away with natural beef and chicken? And they've made it lawful now that they can start selling that in restaurants. So when you order that steak, how do you know it's not some Frankenstein fucking meat? You won't know. Nobody's making beef better than God. Okay, <laughs> he, he's, he's cornered the market on it. And when's there a shortage of chicken that they got to make imitation chicken? They didn't create this shit for your, your health to be improved upon. But you're thinking about that new car you want to get. That new place you want to show everybody on the internet where you live. The vacations and what you spent too much money on for a watch. It's going to tell you the same fucking time that a Casio will. We're past that stuff now, folks. We're past all that. Happiness is peace of mind. Happiness is having been broke and poor and then having the lux life, knowing that if you went back to broke, there's no reason to kill yourself or commit suicide over that. And some people, I've known people do that. Life's too short and too sweet when you have the right people in it. And I have looked at these markets, looked at the opportunities that these markets have given me and made available to me. And I said at the time that they were more important at the time than spending any amount of time, whether it be five minutes chit-chatting with my niece or going somewhere with my son by myself, taking a ride with him and just talking to him like a dad. That's wealth. Being looked at every day now, and they come down, they, they smile, and they tell me, 12 more weeks, Dad, smiling. 12 more weeks, what are you going to do, Dad? What are you going to do? Because they don't believe it either. They think I'm going to be still doing what I'm doing. And if you got bets going on that I'm going to stay here, you're going to fucking lose. I'm telling you that right now, you're going to lose. November 11th will be my last Twitter space. Not sure what I'm going to say, what I'm going to talk about, but that'll be the last thing I do on Twitter. 
the Twitter account will stay. Nothing gets deleted. My YouTube channel will stay up as well. And my wife made concession that, you know, once a week I could do something, but I want to see how long I can go without having to do anything because I think it would be disrespectful for me to just still complain. She's made an allowance for it. I just don't know what I would do because it would probably be too hard for me to just do one thing. You know how I am. <laughs> it's supposed to be a short video and it's four hours. It's just be a short little thing on Twitter space and it's four hours. It doesn't feel like four hours when I'm doing it. I'm certainly not tired or fatigued talking. But I give a fuck. And if you don't recognize that in me, I'm not trying to monetize this. I want you to be prepared. I want you to be successful. And I want you to think about life differently. Because I didn't think this way when I was younger. I had a chip on my shoulder. And this year, I let go of it. I spent all these years chasing approval from a man that is gone. He's gone. I can, I'm never going to get that. And I've lied to myself saying that if I did this and did this, did this, I'll get that, that moment. Trying to get it through all of you. You all can say whatever you want to say that you care about me, you appreciate and all that stuff. As nice as that is, and I'm not trying to discount it, but emotionally and psychologically, it pales in comparison to what one small nod and a smirk by my grandfather would have done. And I have identified it now. I'm 51 years old. How many more years do I have? I don't know. I have to put that down. And I have people in my life right now that appreciate what I've done for them, the life that the Lord's given me to give to them. And I want to enjoy that and not be distracted. As much as I love doing this, I want to put it down. And if you really care about me, if you really appreciate me as a teacher, as a mentor, and you really want me to be happy, you would want me to be able to do this and have no guilt trips placed on me with it. Because I swear to God Almighty, I'm not here after the 11th of November. I'm happy that it's, it's getting closer. Every morning I wake up, I think about how close I am to that. And when I'm gone, anybody can say whatever they want to say about me. But I'm watching to see all of you who rises up. Who blooms the biggest, bro the boldest fruit and how they conduct themselves with it. I hope, in closing, that it's these types of discussions, these types of things where I've talked to you and tried to edify you with the things that I learned painfully or, or too late, that you embrace them early on. And it helps you stay focused as a well-rounded human being, as an adult, a responsible adult that doesn't take their success and stick it in the face of other people to try to belittle them. Be thankful for everything you have, whether you exist as a person of faith, whether you acknowledge as a creator or a God or not, he exists. And the only reason why you have what you have, it comes from him. And I think that's about enough for today.